Okay, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the first of our demo sessions. Uh, this morning, we're hosting CNX and they're going to show you how their valence application can, as it says right on the chart in front of your very eyes, how you can build an IBM web app in under 10 minutes. So that's all you need to hear from me. I'm going to hand you over now to Richard Malone, who will be running this session. Okay. Richard? Thank, you very, thank you very much, John. And John, can I just uh, remind you before I start, uh, are we recording? We are indeed recording. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And uh, this is me. Uh, my name is Richard Malone. Uh, this is my email address. I just like to put that out there at the very beginning in case I forget at the end. And then you guys can either write that down or take a picture of the screen just so you have my contact information. If you feel like after this you're interested in what we're showing or you have any questions, feel free to you know, contact me at any time. And I am CNX's co-founder and managing partner. And I'm gonna be doing part one of this. This is gonna be in two parts. I'm gonna give a quick overview of our valence software and talk about the anatomy of a Nitro app. And the second part of this, I'm gonna hand it over to Sean Langtree. Uh, and this is Sean's contact info, if you wanna take that. Sean is our director of professional services, and he is one of the lead designers of the, of the Nitro app builder, which we will be demonstrating. And he will be handling part two. So he's gonna be the guy who's gonna show the software he gets the exciting part to actually show you how the, the app is created. Um, but I need to start, you know, this, instead of just jumping right into a software demonstration, this part really helps so that it, it helps set the stage for what you're going to see. So you have some context for understanding. So let's just talk about our valence software overall. You know, what is it? If you had to put it into one sentence, it's basically in a suite of development and runtime software that handles all IBM I modern application needs. So that's a, it's a very, you know, all encompassing <laughs> sentence there. Um, <clears throat> it is native to the IBM I. Um, a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, okay, well, what system, uh, Linux or Windows system, do you steal this from and shoehorn it onto the IBM I? So I have this on the slide to sort of preempt that question that this is all native to the IBM I. Uh, my company, CNX, sort of designed this all from the ground up. And the functionality is primarily delivered, you know, by web services written in RPG. Uh, there are no external servers required. That's another question I get, like, you know, where's the hidden Windows server sitting behind the IBM I or something like that. There is nothing like that. You just install Valence to your IBM I. You have to be on 7.1 or higher. And then you navigate to the URL to log in. So everything that you'll see us show today you'll be able to go to our website, download our installer, install to your IBM I, and try it yourself. And it's, it's quite easy. Um, I do want to point out before I move off this slide that we do have earlier versions of Valence that work earlier than 7.1. I hope everybody on this call is at 7.1 or higher, but if for some reason you're not, you can email me and we do have, we do have versions that are somewhat older um, that have most of the features. Okay, so... Uh, what's included with Valence? <clears throat> I'm going to just talk about some of the high-level features. There's actually a lot more than what I'm going to show you on this slide, but these are sort of the heavy hitter features. Um, there's a Valence portal, and there's a couple screenshots of it there. There's the desktop version and the mobile version. The Valence portal will be, that's going to handle your login, <clears throat> your session management, your group security, like when users log in, what do they have access to? Okay, uh, not every user is going to have access to see everything. So that handles all of that. Then we have the Valence RPG Toolkit, because you'll see we have, you know, sort of a fancy modern user interface, but how do we talk to that user interface from the IBM I? Well, that's handled by the Valence RPG Toolkit, which is really just in the form of a service program that handles all of the communication efficiently with the front end. And then there's the Nitro App Builder. I'm not gonna say much about that right now because that's primarily what we're gonna be demonstrating today. So we'll come back to that. There's something in there called AutoCode, which is sort of like a wizard that you go through and you answer a bunch of questions and it'll generate an app for you at the end. That's good for creating like inquiry programs and file maintenance programs, stuff like that. Um, there's also something called Nitro iAdmin, which if you're an IBM i administrator, um, this is going to handle things like re-enabling user profiles uh, that get disabled, uh, looking at spool files, answering 
system operator messages that need to be answered, stuff like that. <clears throat> we also have something called the Nitro File Editor, <clears throat> which is really a, a cool sort of file editing uh, tool that uses the valence interface to be able to edit database files um, in a really sort of user-friendly way. Then we have something called the Nitro Source Editor, which is sort of an IFS management tool. Um, and then we have Fusion 5250, which is the latest big feature to Valence, which is an HTML5 emulator. And um, we're probably gonna add a really, really short demo of this. When, when I turn it over to Sean, and he's actually doing the software demo, we're gonna show that for, for about a minute. We don't normally do that in this presentation, but just recently with everybody working from home with this coronavirus situation, that has become like a really important feature of the product because um, you know, it gives you an emulator to use right within Valence and you don't have to install anything on users PCs, okay? So we'll, we'll show that briefly. Um, and I put a star next to the Nitro App Builder because that is really the star of the show, okay? Um, the Nitro App Builder it gets all the love when we're trying to decide like what to, what features of, of Valence to invest in. Uh, this is what drives most of our sales uh, of the product. Everybody wants the Nitro App Builder because that's what makes it efficient for you to, to create and deploy applications that are useful to your business fastest. So that's really the star of the show. So let's talk about the Nitro App Builder. What is that? Okay, so, so essentially the Nitro App Builder is classified as a low code app builder, right? So you create user interface elements like all the things listed here, charts, list forms, and maps and stuff. We call all the visual components widgets and no programming is required. You can do a little bit of programming if you want to extend things, but no programming is required to be successful. Um, you take those visual images or uh, widgets that you create and you combine one or more of them into a Nitro app, okay, as into a final app. Then once you have multiple widgets, you can combine those visual uh, widgets uh, uh, together and create user interactions that we call behaviors, okay? That's what happens when the user takes some type of action. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, then once the developer goes through all of this, then you can save and deploy those apps through the Valence portal, okay? So that's sort of just a little bit of an overview. And I like to talk about, when I do these presentations, you know, what problems are we solving with this? Because I get a lot of, you, you know, you don't do a lot of programming with this, but we get a lot of programmers are the first ones of a, you know, when you're looking at a company that could use our product, typically it's developers that are coming to us first asking questions. <clears throat> and developers generally want to write code. And a lot of developers, you know, they want to have full control of the code. So, you know, but the reality is it takes far too long to create and deploy useful modern web and mobile apps to your IBM I users. This is, this is a problem, right? Um, generally, businesses need apps created in hours or days, right? 20 years ago, you know, when we were given, when I was given a task to do, sometimes I got a month to do it, that same task you know, maybe I, I get like, the expectations are much higher. So, you know, maybe I have to get that app done in a matter of hours. So I need the proper tools to be able to do that. Also, truly modern user interfaces, right? The word truly there is italicized because, you know, sometimes we laugh at what people call modern, but to really, to create a really good modern user interface does require a high skill set. okay? If you're gonna code that user interface manually in code, it has a long learning curve and, you know, it does require a very high skill set. You cannot be successful with that right away if you're going to do it manually. Also, and we have a lot of problems. We, you know, we're based in Chicago. We have a big problem with this. Good development resources are scarce. And when you do find somebody good, they're expensive. So companies generally need to do more with less. So that's the reason uh, that we create something like this, uh, Nitro App Builder, and it has been very successful. So next part is I'm going to, just briefly describe to you the anatomy of a Nitro app. And this is going to give you the best sort of overall context of what you're going to see when we get into the demo. And I think it'll make the demo um, make a little bit more sense to you. So the first thing that we start with when we create a Nitro app is a data source. Okay. And I'm not talking about creating a DDS or an SQL table. We assume that's done by you already through however you normally do that. We're just talking about going into the Nitro app builder and hooking up to your data and saying, I want to get data from this file 
or you can put together an SQL statement combining things and sorting them. So define where your data is coming from. Then once you do that, you can attach visual elements to that data. And in this uh, slide, you know, now we're showing that we have a grid, which is sort of like a subfile, right? This is going to be a list of records. So you can attach a visual element to that data. You can also, you know, attach a chart to that. So you can have more than one widget attached to the same data source, okay? And then you put one or more widgets into a final app. You only have to have one widget, one visual element to create a final Nitro app, but you can have more than one, obviously. Also, you can have multiple data sources. <clears throat> so here we show now we have a map widget, um, you know, it's sort of like a Google map control that hooked up to some data source, which might be, you know, a file of addresses, and that can also participate in the same app. And there's really no limit to the number of data sources in which you can have in, to, in an app. Also, it's also important to know that you can have the same widget can participate in multiple apps. Like for example, you might have a map widget that shows customer addresses. You might have multiple apps that that participates in. You change the map widget one time and that will affect every app that it participates in. So let me rearrange the screen a little bit here so I can talk about behaviors. So now we have the app level in the upper left-hand corner. Behaviors are all defined at the app level. And this is what happens when the user takes an action. I'll give you some examples. So one behavior might be if a bar on a bar chart widget is clicked, then maybe we update the grid widget. Maybe the bar, the one we clicked is just gonna limit the grid, the list of just the ones from that bar, for example. Uh, another behavior might be if a row is clicked on the grid widget, maybe then I'm showing um, a location from that record on the map, okay? And then one more, uh, maybe if a button is pressed on the grid widget, then I'm calling some special RPG program to perform a task. And this is actually a really, really important um, thing because anything that you can conceive of uh, that Nitro App Builder does not do out of the box, you can create your own special logic and hook that in, in, in uh, really specific ways to be able to do almost anything. Um, so like a lot of people say, well, I see Nitro App Builder, I really like it, but it can't do this. And I'm like, well, just create, you know how to program an RPG or you have somebody in your company that does, go have them write what the task is supposed to do and we'll hook it up to the UI. So it, it, in most cases it can be done. Okay, so that's that. Also, before I turn it over to Sean, I just wanna point out a couple things. You know, We do offer training courses on all this stuff. I won't spend too much time dwelling on these, but you can see we do have a three day course in the Nitro App Builder, which covers everything you'll see, which we're gonna go through quickly in a lot more detail. Um, and then we, you know, we offer various other things. If you're going to do some backend development or you want to be a adva valence administrator, we also offer training on that. So that is available. Um, we also offer professional services. You know, we have these four different ways that we like to talk about that we engage with customers, you know, all the way from doing everything on your own. You know, we have quite a few customers that will download valence, they'll use it and they do everything on their own. And we, we rarely hear from them all the way to contacting us for, you know, turnkey creation of, of new apps. I have the most successful one, just so you know, in case you're thinking about this, is that in, in most cases <clears throat> and in the most successful ways, when you're first getting started with Valence, if you engage with our services for professional mentoring, we call it, like your first app or two apps or three apps that you're creating, if you engage with us to help you through it, we're helping you make sure you're using best practices and using everything correctly. And then you learn from that and you can be more successful on your own later. So that, that seems to be the most successful way forward. Okay, just some notable customers really quick. Um, you know, we do, this is not just uh, <laughs> something that's new. We've been out for a while. Their first release of Valence was uh, Valence 1 in 2008. So we've been around quite a while and we have some uh, really big customers. Um, the one in the upper left there, Valvoline, I think they have the record for the number of Nitro apps deployed. It must be in the thousands when I look at their system, um, all in all areas of the company and departments and so forth. So, um, you know, this is used very, very heavily. What you'll see today is used very, very heavily by a lot of companies. Okay, so now it's demo time. And before I turn it over to Sean, I just wanted to mention to everybody that, um, so the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna transition over to Sean, that'll take 30 seconds to a minute or so. 
and then I'm going to be monitoring the chat. So as Sean is going through the demo, if you ask questions or something's not clear or whatever, I'll be monitoring that chat and then maybe I'll, I'll raise it to Sean and ask Sean to clarify something or um, we don't, when we do these demos, it's not heavily, heavily scripted. We have a general idea of what we're going to create, but we can, you know, sort of go off on little tangents if you want. And we, we like it to be sort of a real thing. Um, and so now let's transition to Sean. Sean, are you there? Richard, before Sean actually starts up, we do have a question from one attendee okay. wanting to know if you're going to make the handout available. I can do that. Yes. Just let me know how I do that. Uh, right. You and I can talk at the end and uh, we'll arrange that. So the answer to the questioner was yes, the yes. handout will be available. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now let me see if I can transition. Over okay. To okay. All right. I switched to share my screen now. Yeah, we can see. Okay. All right. Uh, were you going to talk through here first, Richard, about the uh, just the portal or logging in here? Yeah. Uh, let me walk Sean through a few things that I wanted to show, especially that we don't normally cover. Um, I just this is the portal login that mm -hmm. Sean is at right now. And and Sean, if you would just show people the how you can choose a language. You know, this is imp really important to some companies. You know, we have uh, balance um, translated into nine different languages by a professional translation company. This is him demonstrating it in Japanese, for example. So all the database behind balance is full Unicode compatible, so it can handle double byte characters just fine. Um, and so, okay, well, we'll switch back to English to uh, go in, go ahead and log in. Okay, so, um, just real quick, you know, maybe go into portal administration. So if you're an administrator of Valence, in the upper left-hand corner, there's some area called portal administration. If you go in there, Sean can just briefly show, uh, if you open up the drawer on the left, you can see this is all the areas that you can manage. You, you can manage your users, your applications, groups is for like group security, um, and a lot of other things. So just to give you a general idea, you know, this is not a demonstration of the portal or, or anything like that, but I just want to give you guys just a a quick demonstration of that. Um, this would probably be a good time to just show the Fusion uh, 5250 also, Sean. If you could just open that up. This is the emulator that's built in uh, to Valence. This is going to give you the green screen uh, through a, um, this is fully HTML5 emulator communicating directly with the Telnet service on the IBM I. So nothing's installed on Sean's PC, no emulators installed. He's just, just using the browser and uh, uses WebSockets, so it has a very sort of two-way interactive experience. You can get break messages and things like that, and it's sort of designed to look like an emulator that users are familiar with. So, uh, you know, they can be very successful with this and, and already understand how to use it immediately. Okay, Sean, that's, a, I mean, everybody knows how an emulator works. <laughs> so the fun part of that is how it's, how it's created and that it's an HTML5 emulator. Um, also, in this section here, um, uh, in the example section. So if you were to install Valence on your IBM I, you would get all these examples as well. Um, and uh, go ahead and launch a couple of those examples, whichever one you want, Sean. Uh, these are completed Nitro apps that have already been created. Uh, just to give you an idea of the kind of things you can create, this is a sort of a simple order entry app. Um, and you can see, you know, this is a list of orders that you start with. If Sean just opens one up, you can see, you know, you can link images in there. And all this is done with no programming. It's just using our Nitro App Builder tool to sort of go through and, and define it, right? So that's simple order entry. Maybe go show another one. Uh, this is IBM I dashboard. I think this is using some uh, fancy SQL statements to just get information about the system, like job queues, number, disk space, disk space use, things like that, just statistics, like work system status type stuff. Okay. And uh, maybe one more, Sean. Okay. This is, this is going to show you the, the map widget that's included. So this is like a customer, this is looking at sort of the customer database and mapping them out on a Google, Google map API. Um, and then you can click on one of those little markers and call up the, uh, the address there. Okay, excellent. Okay, I think so people get a general idea of the kind of apps that you can create. Um, so 
I, is there anything else you want you want me to explain or show, Sean, before you go into the demo? Uh, I was just going to show the customer dash or the valence dashboard quickly, just because it's okay. more of a unique application. Okay, I'll let you take. You I'll also have a couple of questions in chat, Richard. Yeah, I think I'll look those over. Why, Sean? If you want to just uh, talk about this valence dashboard a little bit, I'll look over the chat. Yeah, and then th this application would be um, more suited to run as a like a kiosk type application in full screen mode and. Um, you could see there's a little carousel on the bottom here, and that'll just change every, in, in our case, I think we have it set to switch every 10 seconds. So you can create applications like, like this as well that require no user input and might just be like on a, like even on a shop floor, let's say, just, you know, showing various statistics or something. We'll get out of that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, John, stand by while I answer some questions from the chat. So we got a few questions about the Fusion 5250, which I guess I'm not surprised that has been sort of a popular feature. Um, the first question is, can a Nitro app call an RPG uh, display program? And the answer is uh, yes, you can link in, link in directly from like the, like for example, the app that Sean will create for you today, you can put links in there that will automatically open up Fusion 5250 and bring you directly to a particular Fusion 5250 screen. Like you can set up macros that will sort of step through screens for the user in the background and bring you right to sort of like an inventory inquiry or financial screen or whatever you can conceive of. So yes, that is possible. Um, let's see, and I've got some duplicates here. Uh, do you need a VPN connection to use Valence? Well. I would say you can use a VPN connection. That's sort of the easiest way to be able to use Valence is through a VPN connection. So if the users already have VPN, they can log into VPN and then you know, you'll go to the URL of your IBM I on a special port number and then they'll get the sign on screen. If you don't want the users to use VPN, you have to work with your network administrator to sort of open up the Valence port to the outside. And uh, then you can, then we recommend <clears throat> Um, using an SSL certificate with encryption to sort of secure that. We have a really awesome blog entry about how to do that. Um, so if you were to just Google, if anybody's interested in this, you just go out and you Google CNX Valence SSL, you'll get, it's a really, really popular blog post. You'll get it right as the top result of Google. Uh, and you can see like how that is done. Also the Fusion 5250, someone asked specifically about that. That does work over HTTPS as well with SSL. So in fact, if you switch your valence uh, instance over to using SSL, it's required that the Fusion 5250 use the SSL because you can have a non-SSL thing working inside the screen of, a, of an SSL screen. So all of that is, is uh, definitely doable. And um, I think, we're actually getting quite a few questions there, but I'll, I'll, I'll let Sean uh, get started with the demo and I'll read over some more of these and uh, maybe I'll answer some more at the end. So go ahead, Sean, I'll let you take it over from here. Okay, so I'm gonna um, launch the Nitro App Builder application. And first thing, if, uh, as Richard stated, the first thing we need is we need a, a data source. So. I'm going to click this bottom uh, right button here to add a new data source. <clears throat> and this takes us into a wizard like uh, screen here where it will walk us through creating our data source. So the first step is to add any files that we're going to be using. Um, we're going to use a file called demo CMAS. That's a demo customer master file that comes with every valence installation. Uh, I could add as many files as I like. Uh, we're only doing one here. And I'm gonna click next. And it skipped me over the file joins step because I only have one file. But now I need to select the columns that I want in my data source. So it's pulling the fields from the file that I entered. So I could just click these and bring them over to the right. I'm gonna select add all. I'm just gonna add every field. Um, just some things to point out. If I needed a calculated column, I could do that by clicking this. And I could also, <clears throat> Um, wrap a function around any of these fields too. But this is going to be a really simple data source, so I'm just going to continue on. Step four would be filters. It's an optional step. I'm not going to filter the data. Group buys are only valid if I'm summarizing something. Uh, I will use an order by. Let's order by customer name. I could toggle the direction like this. And the last step is the preview. This is just going to validate 
the statement and, and pull the data. It's just gonna pull a sample of the data, so all looks good. <clears throat> um, you know, behind the scenes, all we're doing here is building a SQL statement. If you were curious to see it, you could click here and, and see what we're running. So I'm gonna save this and I need to give my data source a name. I'm gonna call it customers. Uh, tags, this is just for, uh, I, I will put a tag, this is just for organization. You know, when you have a lot of data sources and widgets, it's nice to have some tags to organize it. So save. So now we have our first data source. Um, I just wanna point out there's another way to create data sources. Um, if I hover over here, you see this enter a free form SQL statement. I could have done it this way as well. I could have done, you know, select all from demo CMAST. And, you know, as I type this, it's always validating and it pulls the fields from the files that you, that you have. I could kind of just do this. Just wanted to show that. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have a data source, we can create widgets. Now, widgets are views of our data. So I'm going to click Create Widget. And these are all of the available widgets in App Builder. We're going to create a grid. So now I'm in the configuration screen for the grid. The first step is to select the columns that I want to show. Um, so notice, you know, these are all the fields from our data source. So I'm going to select Name, uh, Address, city, country, and let's say uh, year-to-date sales. <clears throat> so as I do that, you'll see this little preview comes on the bottom. And this is just to kind of help us uh, deal with the widths because I can adjust the widths and all that. I'm not going to have time to get into all of this, but I'm just going to drag this up and let's just see the data. Um, so one thing I want to change is address one. I just want that to show as address so I can change my column headings here. Um, and then year-to-date sales, I want to change that to rep be represented as uh, currency, as money. So if I go to my column, I could click this formatting button, and we have all sorts of built-in formatters. I'm going to go right to money and choose that. Save, click right OK. So <clears throat> I'm going to go to the next step. Oh, you know what? Let's 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 summarize the money too. I can total total the column up. So I'm gonna to go to this configure section. It'll give us a larger view. So that looks a bit better. Um, one other thing I might like to do is flag customers that have uh, year-to-date sales, let's say less than $1,000. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna go back to columns. I'm gonna to go to my year-to-date sales and I'm gonna click this colors icon. And I'm gonna add a rule. If year-to-date sales is less than 1,000, make the background color, let's say this off red. Go back here, bigger view and look at it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna go all over all these, but basically, I mean, these are pretty self-explanatory. Do I want the user to be, to be able to resize, move, hide columns? I'm just gonna leave everything as is. Paging, notice we're paging right now, 25 rows per page. I could change that. Um, I'm just gonna remove paging altogether. Okay. Search, um, we can add a built-in search. So I'm just gonna click active and this will repaint. Let's just see what that does. So that gives me a search in here. Okay. I'm gonna change my search to be a contained search just to make it a bit more flexible. And I'm gonna to go to the download section here and let's, let's give the ability to have a PDF download. Um, when they download the file, let's call it customer list. And I could put a header, I'll call it my customers. So notice that created a little PDF button on the bottom here. So I'll just test that. Let's see what that does. So here's our PDF, okay. All right, um, I am going to save this widget now. We'll call it customer list. Okay, 
So now I have the minimum requirements to at least create you know, a very simple application because I have a widget. So I'm gonna go to the apps tab over here. And on the bottom right, I'm gonna add an app. First thing it pops up is asking me to add a widget. Um, we only have one widget, let me click this. So this right hand side here, we refer to this as the canvas. This is, this is the area that your user is going to see. As I interact with the canvas, suppose like I click here, this left hand side will show me various options. Okay. For now, I'm just going to put in a title for the app. I'm going to call it Summit Demo. And that's it. And let's, let's save this application. Everything you see here can be changed in portal administration, like the name of the app, the category, the group membership. Um, the only thing I want to point out here is that we have this including portal desktop. I'm logged into the desktop portal. And there's also a mobile portal as well. And by having this checked means that this application will be made available in the mobile portal as well, a mobile version of the application. Save that. <clears throat> so now this application should be available. I can launch, you know, I, if I went back to the, this is the launch pad, I would see it here. Um, I could also launch it here, or I could just search for it. Okay, so here is our first running application. So I need to, uh, we're gonna add a bit to this. Let's add a, uh, a click event. So when I click one of these customers, I wanna show a map of their location. Now I'm gonna go through this really fast because I know we're getting short on time already. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to data sources widgets. I'm gonna add a new widget. It's gonna be a map. All I need to do here is specify the fields from my data source that comprise of the address. Normally, how, however you type it, like in a Google search, I would type in address, city, state, zip, maybe that's enough. I can change things about this map widget, you know, the terrain, I could make it uh, you know, roadmap, satellite, whatever. We're just gonna leave the defaults. So save, I'm gonna call this customer map. Okay. So now I want to incorporate this new map widget into our application. So I'm going to go back to, app, to apps here. I'm going to click on our application and I'm going to click this add widget. So I could just click it and add it directly in here. And then I get arrows to move the widget around, you know, where I'd like it to be. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it as a pop-up. So I'm going to click add widget again and notice as I hover over here, we get this little add as pop-up pop-ups go down here. So now I just need to tell my application when to show that pop-up. And this is where behaviors come into play. So I'm gonna click this behaviors button. And I don't have time to really explain all this, but if I dr drop this down, here's our customer list. There's a row click event. Currently there is no action attached to it. Let's add an action. The action I wanna do is I wanna filter another widget's data, basically. So I'm this is another uh, wizard-like process. I only have one other uh, widget in here. Now it's asking me the field relationships. How does it know to map or to filter the data down of this other widget? You know, we're seeing the data source fields for each widget, for the click widget and the filter widget. Well, it's the same data source, so that's why they look identical. I map customer ID or custno to custno. Um, I'm gonna update the widget title as well. I'll put in the customer name. Save, save. So let me rerun this application. So now when I click on a customer, I should get a pop-up of a map. Let me search CNX, click. Okay. That's our, there's our office right there. Okay. Um, I'm gonna add one more widget into this application. I'm gonna do it really quickly. Um, let's create a pivot grid widget. So a pivot grid will, allows us to summarize all of our data. 
Um, I don't have time to really explain it, so I'm just going to kind of click to get it to work, and then we'll just look and see what it does. But basically, I have a left axis. I want country, I want city, I want state. I want to start with country, and then I want to go to state. So if I go here, we can see what it's doing. It's grouping the data. So, you know, each unique country, then within the United States, we have these states, and then within these states, we have these cities. So I need to define an aggregate column. I want to aggregate year-to-date sales. I'm going to show it as money. And now let's see what we have. So now it's totaling all the sales by country, then by state, then by city. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to click this too. And let me just make one little change here. I'm going to change the view of this. I think it's easier. Um, I'm going to allow the user to configure this themselves and I'm going to put an, an export on as well. So let me just save this customer pivot. Now let's quickly incorporate it into our application. So I'm going to go back into apps, click here. Now, I don't want this pivot grid to be a pop-up window, nor do I want it to live next to this grid. I'm going to create an entirely new section of the application. So I'm just going to click here, add, I'm going to call it pivot. So now I have two sections. Here's my main, here's my pivot section. I'm going to add a widget within my pivot section. Okay. So now I need to tell it how do I get to the pivot section? I'm going to go back to my app. I'd like to put a button up here that just says, let's say show pivot. We'll put a button up here that'll switch to the pivot grid. So that's done through behaviors. So on my main section, I'm just going to add a button. Show pivot. So when that button is clicked, I need to do something. I'm going to hide show widgets. I'm gonna hide the main section and I'm gonna show the, cust the, the pivot section. And as I show it, I want it to load data. I want it to load its data. Make a call to the back end and load all its data. Save, save, save. So let's reload this application. We should have that button there now. Show pivot. And if I click it, there we go. Okay, so now this is all mapped. The user can configure this if they want. You know, suppose I wanted to add zip code into the equation as well. You know, so now it's, it's rebuilding all that data. So now we're mapped by, we're summarizing by uh, country and then down into zip code as well. Okay, so now I need a way to get back to the main screen, right? I don't have any way to get back. So let's go add that in. Back to App Builder, back into the App section. So I'm going to go immediately right back into Behaviors. And on the Pivot section, I'm going to add a button, a back button. And I'm not going to put any text. I'm just going to search for an icon of a left arrow. And I'm going to put the button on the left rather than all the way on the right. So when this button is clicked, I'm going to do opposite of what I did before. I'm going to show the main section and I'm going to hide the pivot section. And let's run this one more time. I just want to verify that when I go to the pivot section, I see that, that back button. So show pivot. There's our little back arrow back to main. Okay. Let's just finalize this a little bit. Um, I just want to point out, uh, we didn't go in here. This is security. Um, you can, you know, def you can turn various features of the application off, like based on a particular user, let's say. They shouldn't be able to see the show pivot. Um, theming, different colors. Um, you know, as I, I'm just going to change the look of this a little bit. So I change the theme. I change the border width. I change the radius. So now when I reload this, look a bit different. Okay. So that's our, that's our finished app. <laughs>
Okay, Sean, uh, this is Richard. I've been monitoring the question. We, we don't have that many questions. We do have one. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about how valence is used on mobile devices and like how you get the app and get, get like how would you get this app to work on a mobile device? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so from either the App Store or the uh, Google Play Store, you would download the valence portal. Uh, once you download the valence portal, you'll be prompted to set up a connection to your IBM I. And then any applications, like in, for, in this case, because we had that mobile checked, this, this application would show in the mobile portal and <clears throat> it, would, it, would run, it would run within it. Um, depending, you know, there are some optimizations that are done to run the, uh, the mobile version. Um, it all depends on how your application is. For example, if I had many widgets within this first screen, obviously you couldn't show all those on a mobile, like on a phone. So those would be uh, carouseled rather than shown all at once. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I, I should also just show, because I know, I think that was asked or, or someone brought it up. If I go into behaviors, so let's say this button here, show pivot, on click, you know, right now I'm doing hide show widgets. I could also do other things like I can call an RPG program or, a, or, an, or, an, or an, another URL. Um, so that's where that, that, that uh, linkage comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Sean. The, um, we do have a few minutes left and I just wanted to point out there were quite a few questions about the Fusion 5250 uh, still. Um, can you just talk, you don't have to show it, but can you just talk about how you would integrate um, a Fusion 5250 screen with your app? Like how would you get the user to sort of jump from um, an app that you've created into the 5250 screen? Yeah, I'm just going to create a button here that says launch fusion and let's uh, when that gets clicked. I'm launching an app Fusion 5250. So then there are <clears throat> optional parameters. So you would have you would you could create a macro And you would pass that macro in here and then it would run within fusion. So let me just Show that here. So I should have a new button out here. So if I pass the macro, that macro would run and it would get you to wherever you needed to be in the screen. Yeah, and someone else also asked, you know, do you have to log in and all that? No, because the 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 user credentials are integrated with the with the valence portal. So when Sean logged into the valence portal, he used his IBM I user uh, ID and password. Now that's that's optional as well. You can create valence specific profiles, but if you if you do log into the valence portal with your IBM I user profile. And then you use Fusion 5250, it will pass those credentials on automatically. And like Sean said, if you create a macro to step through the screens, you can, you can also like click a button and get right to that screen. And you can inhibit showing the user the progress. So from the user's perspective, it's just calling up a green screen and exactly the screen that they want to see. And you can pass through um, uh, parameters like a, a product number or a customer number or stuff like that to get into a specific record to show the user. So again, this is not th this uh, presentation was not specifically meant to be a Fusion 5250 presentation, but I know there's a lot of interest in that right now. Um, so that all of that functionality is available, and that's if you download Valence from our website and uh, trial it out, all of that. It is sort of built in there for you to for you to try out on your own. So I think we are just about out of time. Um, there doesn't seem to be any more questions. Oh, wait a minute. I do see there is a couple in the Q&A now. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, someone asked specifically about a trial version of Valence. Uh, Sean, if you wouldn't mind, would you just go to your open up a tab in the browser really quick to uh, CNX's website and we'll just show everybody. We, we try to make this as simple as possible. If you just go to the download section in the upper right hand corner there, go ahead and click that, Sean. And the, the number, the top one, uh, the download link, if you just click that, go ahead and click it, Sean. So we're just gonna ask you to, you know, to click the box that said you've uh, agreed to the license, uh, the trial license, you put your email address in, and then you choose 
Um, you know, we have installers for the Mac and installers for Windows. Most people are probably using Windows and then you pick your operating system. The version 7.3 for the operating system there will work with 7.4. So if you're on 7.4, you just choose the 7.3 version. And then you run through the installer and everything that Sean has just shown or you've seen there downs will work on your system. So that we make that very easy. The trial lasts for about 30 days, but you can just email us and ask for an extension and we usually extend them out to 90 days at least with no, with no question. Um, the licensing is very simple. It's licensed by serial number. So if you decide to buy a license, um, you know, you, it, you, you just get the serial number and it's basically unlocked for an unlimited number of developers and unlimited number of users. Um, and it's, it, it is by partition. So it's by serial number and partition ID. And if anybody's interested in the pricing, you can just simply follow up with us via email and we'll, you know, we'll get you, a, we'll get you a quote. The pricing is, is very simple. Um, another question was, do you have to sign into Valence to get the web page to work uh, with the code? Um, there are ways to bypass the portal security. So yes, if you, if you don't want the users to actually log in, you can bypass <laughs> the portal security. That's, that's no problem. Um, storage use on the IBM I, I'm just going through the questions here. Storage use on the IBM I, um, it is possible to run this on a very low spec partition. That's a really good question. The, the one that Sean demoed from is a CNX test partition, which is quite small sliver of a partition. Um, so you can, and you could see the performance was, was pretty good. So it, it will hardly use any storage. I forget, I think it uses a couple hundred megabytes of storage. Um, and then uh, it doesn't take much processing power. So yeah. All right. That's the end of the questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody for, for joining. We appreciate your time. And John, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, it's a great, uh, great show, guys. Um, for those who are asking, this uh, presentation has been being recorded. So if you want to watch it back again in slow motion or indeed in high speed, I suppose. Richard probably sounds really interesting at 2x. Uh, but you'll be able to uh, do that after we've had chance to process the recording. So probably at the end of today or first thing tomorrow morning. And with that, I'd like to thank all of the presenters. I'd like to uh, thank all of those of you who attended. And uh, at this point, we're going to be ending this session and we'll be starting up the first of our sessions in the virtual summit uh, in approximately 10 minutes. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.